From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. And we're back. Oh man, EHS. Do you guys know anybody who feels that they have EHS or high sensitivity to electromagnetic frequencies? You know, Ben, I have never met someone personally who has gone through it, but I know, haven't you guys maybe interacted with some people or at least we found out about a whole group of people that yes. experience EHS. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's It's strange because it's a hugely controversial condition it's relatively recent in the span of humanity because society continues to industrialize wireless technology is becoming an increasingly unavoidable aspect of modern life and in step with the the spread or proliferation of wireless technology we've seen the spread and proliferation in the number of things that can emit some kind of emf uh, but then we've also seen a rise in people who feel that this is somehow damaging to them i mean think about it look around any place on a given day you are probably not very far from some sort of wireless device they make life way easier but they also come with this speculation about health risk and it's it's an international level concern now the who the world health organization describes it in depth uh, and they have a pretty good summary of what ehs means or what its symptoms are at least for anybody listening in if these symptoms sound familiar to you we'd love to hear your personal take but here they go they say uh, the symptoms most commonly experienced include dermatological symptoms, redness, tingling, and burning sensations, as well as neuroasthenic and vegetative symptoms, fatigue, tiredness, uh, concentration difficulties, dizziness, nausea, heart palpitation, and digestive disturbances. They also note, uh, quote, the collection of symptoms is not part of any recognized syndrome. Mm. So there's that. Um, and it really is something that kind of the jury is still out in terms of uh, consensus with uh, modern medical communities. Mm-hmm. They, they, they largely chalk it up to psychosomatic addict insane. <laughs> right. So more a mental condition than a physical ailment. But important to note, it remains an ailment nonetheless. Uh, the The reason that the majority of the medical community today doesn't consider this to be part of any recognized syndrome is due to the research. There have been multiple double blind studies. And in these double blind studies, there's been no proven correlation between exposure and symptoms. And you can find, uh, for instance, you can find numerous cases of people who, when told that they are being exposed to EMF, they report these symptoms. But when they are later told they were being misled, then the symptoms kind of go away. Uh, and this this is, you know, we want to be very respectful here. We want to exercise empathy in these cases. Experts conclude that there may be a nocebo effect at play. But regardless of the actual cause, it's important to acknowledge these people don't think they're just making it up. No, you're right. There are videos of people online right now that you can watch who are expressing the real pain that they experience when they believe they're being bombarded by EMF. And they are being bombarded by EMF, like we all are. It's just, for some reason, they do feel pain for one reason or another when they think they're in that situation. Um, And a lot of people may just dismiss it, but I think that's just... I, I, I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's if they're genuinely in pain, if they feel like they're in pain, then cynically making a buck off people in distress is, to say the least, deeply unethical. Uh, The good news is folks who believe they suffer from EHS have found some abatement or mitigation of symptoms through things like cognitive behavioral therapy 
or in some cases through changing their environment, which lowers their perceived rate of exposure to EMF. Uh, I don't know about everybody else, but I first learned about the prevalence of this concept in kind of a strange side quest uh, that you had mentioned earlier, Matt, the U.S. National Radio Quiet Zone. It is a really creepy area of the United States. We did an episode on it previously because I think we were all collectively baffled when we encountered it with very little warning and ended up getting lost while filming a, a road rally documentary. Uh, they have really heavily, no, you were there. You remember this. They have really heavily yeah. enforced laws against almost any kind of wireless signal. They Transmission. Will they have vans yeah. that like, roam around monitoring for it. <laughs> And they'll they will you come like find ticket. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because it what, yeah. it's so easy to find, right? Because it's like there's so few signals that they stick out like a, like a sore thumb. It looks like a ghost town. Electromagnetically town speaking. Boy, does it Hey, ever. there it is. Yeah. Uh, it has a payphone network. Every place we went to was closed. Uh, we were lost for hours. And... Over the years, this place, has, it, it's a quiet zone because it has a very powerful, ginormous radio telescope. Uh, but over the years, people who believe they're suffering from EHS have moved to this area to avoid exposure. It would be uh, somewhat of a paradise for them. But if you look at the news about Green Bank, uh, West Virginia and nearby towns, you'll see that these new folks do not get along with the locals. Tensions are high. I mean, first, it's a remote area, very few job opportunities. Uh, but then secondly, they're known for raising raising cane in the in the cover in like the local town meetings and stuff. They want all the fluorescent lights gone, et cetera. Yeah. I believe Werner Herzog did a, uh, a mini doc on this community of folks that uh, that suffer from from that, that that believe they suffer from that condition, and they they have like a whole little kind of almost commune kind of vibe. It's very hippie kind of uh, stuff. They're playing bluegrass music and living in the hills, you know, and not using phones. <laughs> right, right. Which you know you don't have to believe you have EHS. You don't have to think you have a medical condition. To acknowledge that could be a really good time. I'm sure everybody at some point has been tired of having a phone around them constantly. Yeah. Well, if you're out there and you can hear this, can I come hang and bring my jimbe? Do you guys do drum circles? Everybody does. Drum Matt circles. does know how to slap at a jimbe. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we, we would seriously love to hear from people who live in a community like this. We'd love to hear your take. Again, we're... We're not making judgment calls. We're just saying what the current medical consensus is at this point. Uh, there is one last note we need to make. It is absolutely, absolutely true that high levels of electromagnetic radiation can hurt people. It's true that we are inundated with more invisible energy than any previous generation of humanity ever, full stop. So perhaps that's why the idea of the tinfoil hat endures in the modern day. There's just enough science and there's just enough concern to make a lot of us think twice after we laugh at that loon on television. Um, I gotta tell you guys, one, one error I realized about this tinfoil hat, it's not a, like a breathable <laughs> substance. I think, I, <laughs> I think my hair is probably a mess under this thing. Oh, can you, should we check it out? Uh, I'd rather not. Okay, all right, ten, all right. Ten, you got you got ten foil hat head. <laughs> yes, I've got ten foil yeah. hat head. Just so yeah. Uh, you know, just, yeah. Just before we wrap it up, I just think yeah. it's it's interesting to that this that this phenomenon definitely came in this form from fiction. It is very much in line with like the the image of the 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 madman scrawling on the walls you know what i mean like uh, mm -hmm. like various ciphers and you know connecting the dots and sort of like the conspiracy red thread board and all of that stuff it's definitely part and parcel with that kind of iconography and i think it's super interesting that you were able to trace it back to that huxley short story because i thought maybe it was based in reality to some degree but obviously it is but not necessarily in that form it is strange, isn't it, the way that fiction and fact can kind of intermingle back and forth mm -hmm. in, in this odd dance where 
it becomes increasingly difficult at times to separate one from the other. Still, mm. uh, we we know, I, I love you bring up this example of other tropes like the madman scrawling on the wall, or of course, the conspiracy wall with the string and everything attached to it. Uh, these These ideas all come from somewhere. And sometimes it's not the fact that informs the fiction, but the fiction that starts to inform the fact. I'm just now I'm just saying fortune cookie things. I'm doing a word salad. Sorry, guys. I think I think the I think the hat's getting to me. Uh, so uh, I seriously would love to. I, I think we all would love to hear from someone who uh, feels that they have experienced EHS or from someone who feels that they have successfully blocked some kind of damaging um, damaging energy with a Faraday cage of some sort. And, you know, we didn't even talk about the pain rays. Uh, we didn't even talk about mm. Havana syndrome. You know what I mean? Uh, has anybody at the State Department tried wearing a tinfoil hat? That just sounds silly to say. Thought control rays, psychotronic scanning. Don't mind that. Because I'm protected. Because <laughs> I made this hat. <laughs> Something like yeah. that. Sorry, weird. Sorry, weird. Or Al or whatever. <laughs> Have whatever you go by. <laughs> the Yankster. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, with our shout out to Weird Al himself, we would love to hear from you. Let us know what's on your mind. Have you ever worn a tinfoil hat seriously or known someone who has? Uh, tell us what went down. We try to be easy to find online.